Yeah, you're just a hint. That's good. <laughs> Doing well. Oh, now can you hear me? I I've double boomed it. I didn't actually turn my mic on or turn my levels up. So that's a, a double boomer moment. So yeah, double on brand this week. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so everybody, welcome to the. I'll try it again. I'll just do that intro again. Welcome to Monty and Mazza's Diet <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. This is episode number four, um, week four. Uh, please, can you let me know on the chat that you can now hear us okay? Um, that would be great. Yay, they can hear us. Fantastic. Yay. <laughs> uh, yeah, week four of our, of our, of our sort of six month quest, I suppose, to uh, get, get fitter and more healthier. Uh, and yes, and, and lose a little bit of weight. Um, so I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Mazza McBob. How are you yeah. this week? I am good this week, yes. I can safely say I'm still going strong. I haven't had any bad days or cheat days yet. I'm still not finding the food I'm eating boring. Um, my results are tapering slightly, but when I did my initial research into this diet, uh, quite a few people had said that they tend to get a bit of a plateau around week three and four, and then it, it continues more rapidly again. So I was kind of expecting a bit of something like that anyway. Um, and, you know, I'm actually taking lots of different measurements, as you know, with hmm. body fat percentage is and all that kind of stuff so so i'm still seeing you know good results um in other areas even if the weight isn't going as quickly as it was for the first few weeks yeah well that's good at least you, at least you're being consistent um i i was a bit disappointed this week because after after my rather jammy uh one pound loss last week uh after you know having my cousin down and and all the bad things that i ate um I was a lot better this week, but I've, I've not lost anything. So I have to put my hand up right now. I'm not going to come clean. Uh, it, it was a no a no change for me this week. So, um, yeah. It's like loss is not exactly. I haven't put anything on. So uh, from that point of view, it's good. Um, following on from the uh, tech, dieting tech talk last week, I did finally manage to get around to starting up my fitness my fitness pal profile oh, okay so started putting my things into my fitness pal um uh yeah and it's, it's it's really good it's really clever you know how it how it quickly finds what you know it really is no hassle just finding the things that you've eaten and it's quite clever how it tells you if you're like uh, consuming a bit too much fat or you know it, it really is um quite detailed in analyzing what you've eaten and going oh you, you you're going too much in this direction you need to think more about this and yeah so so just to let you know that even uh for me our uh, our tech talk last week inspired me to to do a bit more of that and uh yeah so i've started that on my phone so hopefully i can report back in the coming week on how well whether that's helped me in any way um yeah, it does a macronutrient breakdown and um, Macro it has some nutrient. yeah. macronutrients. Yeah. yeah, so that's, oh, you know, yeah. how much protein and fiber and carbs and all those kinds of things that you're consuming. Um, and, you know, having done keto last year for, for about six weeks, um, I found that, you know, you can go in and tailor those things. So, you know, with keto, you keep your fat and your protein high, but your carbs low. So you can actually set set the targets yourself if you want. It comes with some defaults out of the box, um, but then, you know, it will alert you as, uh, you know, you've reached as much carbs as you're supposed to have for today and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so you, you can tailor it, but um, it's best to go with the defaults for now. I, I was going to say, um, for those people that don't know what, what keto is. Oh, yes. Uh, so keto is a, um, a low-carb diet, 
Um, and what it does is it creates a chemical reaction in your body. It puts your body into a state of ketosis um, where it actually breaks down fat uh, a lot faster. Um, and I did try it for a while, but I found I was eating, you know, a lot of things like cheese and bacon and stuff, which, um, you know, high in fat, high in protein, but uh, not particularly heart healthy. So I didn't really think it was the best way to go. There were quite a few vegetables that you couldn't eat because mm. they were high in carbs. I love my veg. So um, so the nice thing with Fast 800 is it it is low carb to a certain extent, but it has, you know, only good healthy carbs, things like, you know, beans and lentils and pulses, um, but you shouldn't be having starchy carbs. So it goes some way towards the, the keto thinking, and you may achieve a mild state of ketosis in your body on the Fast 800 that I'm doing, but not as extreme as going full on keto. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is the point in the uh, in the episode where we, we start to review um Mazza's meals of the week i've got my stats first actually oh, have you, oh you've got stats so, mm. <laughs> so i lost uh 1.4 pounds this week which is 11.7 in total 11.7 um, so wow five. so um what's that nearly 12 down and 68 to go uh getting there um, I lost 6% in body fat percentage, so that's 1.8% down now from the start. Um, I've lost since the start 2.2 points on my BMI. I have now actually in my heart rate gotten into the 50s, as I thought I might last week, but my resting heart rate is now 58, which has dropped down from 66 in the beginning. Um, and overall at the moment, I've lost 4.98% of my entire body weight, so um, just on the cusp of 5%. That's amazing. Well done. You you you're an inspiration. Um and well well done Smiler as well who lost 2 pounds this week. Uh congratulations on you. Uh I, I'm D. Have you done D? <laughs> uh, that's now. <laughs> um we might get the results too. <laughs> yes. So next on to the menu. Onto the menu. <laughs> It's, it's a bit sketchy this Ma week. Mazza's had, menu. Um, I had a takeaway at one point. <laughs> what? I know, I know. Yeah, it was day 18, I think, was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that would have been last Wednesday. My usual breakfast, the pesto, bulgur pesto salad, which we actually saw at the end of last episode. I'd made a big batch of that, so. Oh, and Dion lost two pounds this week as well. Oh, well Yay. done, Dee. Congratulations. Excellent. Um, and then my dinner there. I mean, Mark, you've had my meatballs before, haven't you? And I have. um, they're yes. really nice. And I haven't actually cooked any since I've been on the diet, but there are two rather several month old portions in the freezer. And I had one of them and I've forgotten how much I love my meatballs. Um, but I had what I've called caro jetti spaghetti. So that's actually um, a courgette and um, a carrot in, a, in spaghetti format using a spiralizer. Um, so yeah, instead of um, instead of of pasta, which obviously makes it much lower in calories and lower yeah. in carbs. Next. <laughs> Next up. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So yeah, shake for breakfast. Um, probably didn't have enough time, and then the bulgur pesto again for lunch, and as we've seen a few times, a teriyaki salmon and veg, one of my personal faves. Next. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. that's a sort of first stable of your. Uh, uh, yeah, it's one of your meals, isn't it? The, the, I, I have to yeah. say, it's it's, 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 week. it's got that mixture, isn't it, of like uh, the 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 satisfying taste and uh, still being really healthy for you. Yeah, and you know, there's edamame beans there as well, which I really love. Edamame, they're a bit higher in uh, calories than like a standard veg. Um, but they're really nice and you can buy them. I mean, people who've probably been to Wagamamas or what have you might have had mm. edamames. But you can buy them in bags frozen and all you do is pop them into a bowl, whack them in the um, microwave and then you pop them out of the pods and I put a little bit of salt and pepper on mine. But they're really delicious and really easy to just always have in your freezer. Mm. Uh, number 20. Uh, where are you? There we go. Monty has meatballs for tea tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, I, I'm, I'm cooking meatballs myself tomorrow. 
So uh, oh, nice. uh, they probably won't look anywhere near as pretty as your your balls. Um, <laughs> Yummy, anyway. Yes. So this was my takeaway day. So um, we'd we'd organised weeks ago to have friends come around and have some nibbana. Mm. Um, so I just had some bacon and chutney for like a mid morning breakfast. This was a was this a Friday? I think. Yeah. Um, and I worked out that I could have some uh, tandoori chicken, like chicken tikka tandoori, which is without the sauce, uh, and one roti and some dal. Um, I actually ended up having a bit more chicken than that. I had seven pieces, not five. So the calories reflect how many I actually had, wow. not what's in the picture. Um, but I must admit, it wasn't a lot of food for you, 500 calories. You, you went all out with a whole two more bits of chicken. You <laughs> went crazy. Yeah. It was a little bit disappointing in terms of the amount of food, but you know, as a as a, a difference for my palate and for a bit of a treat, mm. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, cool. And it, it's a nice Indian, isn't it? It's, so if you, if you're going to have a treat like that, yeah, do it properly. Okay. So this was another kind of cheatish day and um, we actually did two hikes on the moors this day um so i expelled a, about a thousand calories hiking um and i was actually really good because i'd left myself i was planning on having wraps with my fajitas in the evening but i decided to go with the lettuce wraps instead and be extra good because it was my sunday weigh in the next morning um not that it particularly helped me on the sunday weigh in but um but yeah i only ended up having like 600 calories that day um but yeah those those fajitas still really satisfying whether they're in lettuce or normal wraps i love them because you can have like four or five of them it's crazy and these have mexican beans and pink pickled onions and all sorts in them they're really lovely i love that and, and that's got nothing to do with healthiness but i love the colors <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's it i mean you can't really see them now they're sort of gone but these um pink pickled onions they're absolutely bright pink like almost cerise mm. like a shocking pink so you say the first bite is with the eye, isn't it? So even when you're eating something yeah. really healthily, uh, health healthy, um, if it looks if it looks that that good to begin with, it kind of like half makes you satisfied <laughs> before you've even you'll tried it. Sorry, you'll see that with a lot of the food that I do, I'll put just a couple of tomatoes on top or a little bit of my pink pickled mm. onions again to give that splash of color like here yeah. so um yeah i had basically some of the leftover this was a leftovers day i had some of the leftovers from the um mexican so that was some of the beans and the guacamole and some pink onions for lunch and then i had some leftover takeaway as a sort of a tali which is like an indian version of tapas uh, and it was just like about a spoonful of each thing that was left, left over. But I thought that would make a nice meal for me. Mm. Um, and actually, although there's 324 calories, Ludacris ate the the rice that was there and he ate the um, the chutney and he ate some of the roti. So the calories there reflect actually what I ate, not what's on the plate there. It yeah. was originally about 500 calories before uh, Ludacris got his hands on some of my food. <laughs> yeah. So again, that was another day where I kind of undercut the calories, really, which I'm not doing intentionally. It's just I tot it up at the end of the day and I'm like, oh, but then seven o'clock's passed. And because of the restricted time eating, I can't eat past seven. So I'm like, oh, well, I'll have to just eat tomorrow. I mean, th those individual portions are just a, a couple of spoonfuls each, aren't they? they, they are yeah, it's about small. a tablespoon each. Um, and the paneer sag there it had no, no cheese. There was no paneer left in it. Um, the Bombay chicken was just really a bit of Bombay sauce. And then there was a tiny bit of rice chutney and a little bit of dal. It was not much of each, to be honest. And day 23? So, yeah, um, that was just my porridge usual. Some tuna mayo on rye with some pretty tomatoes and herbs on top to make it look nice and colourful. And, um, and a Thai green curry, which was my second Thai green curry. And, oh, it was just as nice as the first one. I swear, I could just eat that every night. Again, it's that spice, that flavour makes up for the, the lack of calories. Yeah, and it's a massive portion, actually. Mm. Using that, um, that low-calorie coconut milk instead of, you know, if that had proper coconut milk in it, it would be so highly calorific that I'd only have to be able to have a small portion. Mm. But instead, 
it ends up being a massive portion. Um, you know, you don't even need rice with it. It's almost like a like a spicy meat and veg soup almost. It's just so tasty though. Yeah, love it. Cool. And lastly, day 24. So that was um, using, again, a bit of the Mexican. I did myself like Mexi eggs. <laughs> so that's where you kind of, yeah, um, it's just where you use like black beans. Um, you, I used to sometimes put a little bit of bacon in it um, and you kind of Mexican it up normally with like a bit of salsa or something. But actually these beans already had some cumin and spices and stuff when I'd cook them on the weekend. And then you just crack an egg in the middle of the egg and have it for breakfast. It's a bit like having like i don't know like a breakfast burrito or you know that kind of mexican morning okay. style of food yeah. and then baba ganoush on rye two pieces of rye that was a real treat and um and i bet that really um, fill, filled you up uh you know compared to what you would have been used to that was probably quite filling now well all of those things if you look at it i mean yeah, that's yeah. a lot of food it is it think. is yeah and then the bolognese with um, with some garlicky savoy. So it's just cabbage. But if you put like enough sort of garlic and salt and pepper on things, it tastes really, really nice. And um, and Romanesco cauliflower. Mm. I don't know if anybody have one of those. It's a really interesting, yeah. spiky looking, metric type of cauliflower slash broccoli. It looks like it's fractals or something. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It's got um, like a matchy sequence going on yeah that's right yeah <laughs> did you do anything particular with the bolognese to uh ensure it was uh, not too many calories no no i just made a standard batch of bolognese a little while back i think i made seven portions um and i used about 750 le- i'll use lean lean mints like five right. percent yeah mint. um but no just uh, you know sort of spices some sauces um some vegetables uh tin of tomatoes and then you divide it by seven and it, it only comes out at just over sort of 200 calories or something it's um really quite low considering how tasty and meaty yeah. it is amazing cool and uh, talking about hiking on the moors we said last week uh we were planning on going for a walk on the moors to get some of that light exercise in and just to just to prove that we did there we are <laughs> upon uh, what was it uh Fogarton, um Foggin Tor Quarry Foggin Tor Quarry up near Princeton. It's just past Princeton. It's beautiful, yeah. beautiful place. I recommend anybody go for a little walk there. It's not far, it's only like a like probably less than a mile down a, a decent track. Hmm. Um but quite good underfoot. And uh yeah. The Space King is laughing at my Mexi eggs. I don't know if he's laughing or whether he's salivating at, at the prospect. I, I can't quite I can't quite decide. Uh, <laughs> I, I think he likes the idea. I, I think that's what that is. Um, yes, yeah, cool mints. Uh, yeah, that, that works well. Um, uh, my family like um, either uh, chickpea. Uh, for for bolognese and chilies, uh, chick chickpea works quite well. Or you know, just um, a a tin of like salad beans. You know, like five bean salad. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. mix that into a bolognese. All of those things work quite well and uh, don't have the fat content and that of that that comes with the meat. So yes, yes. Yeah. all those are good. Right. So, yep. Thank you for that, Mass. Uh, beautiful food as always. Yeah. He confirms that he was salivating. Oh, he was uh, salivating. Yes, I, I thought he was. Yeah, yes. that's so nice. <laughs> Space King, if you've seen the, 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 well, he probably has seen the previous episodes um, with all my smashed avocados on toast. Didn't have any this week, but I know that's one of his personal favourites as well. <laughs> we we do like an avocado. Oh, we love it. Love it. Okay, um, so moving on to the topic for this week. Um, and because you've done such a good job of uh, giving us your... Uh, weekly menus this this week this week's topic is around batch cooking and being able to um organize and do these kind of menus uh, and your tips for that and i know you've yeah. uh, um produced some images and things to talk about yeah yeah there's a number of different uh, angles i'll talk about and it's kind of batch cooking but also sort of, you know, portionizing and preserving and some of those other things as well. Yeah. So uh, do you want me to um, go to the first image? 
Yeah, or, we can. Or do you do. want to do an intro or anything? Um, I wasn't quite sure how you wanted to do it. No, no, not really. Um, I mean, I guess all of this is kind of prefaced with the fact that, you know, I use my freezer to good effect mm. and I really don't like food wastage at all. So, um, you know, I know there's quite a few people who don't like things in the freezer or they think it tastes different or something like that. But, you know, I've always been quite a keen user of my freezer and, you know, I, I I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, and I, I don't think it tastes any different, to be honest. In fact, things like bolognese, if you make them in advance, you freeze them, then you reheat them. I think they taste much better. The flavor is mellow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so so this is basically all different ways of kind of, you know, using your freezer to good effect and avoiding food wastage. Okay. So uh, first up, I think we've got cheeses. Yeah, so I think... Yeah, we might have mentioned this on week one, actually. Um, but this is something that I've done from time to time. Not a lot of people really think about the fact that you can actually freeze dairy products. Uh, my mum actually freezes milk. I've never tried that myself. But I have regularly frozen cheese, especially, you know, at Christmas, whatever, you've got a big cheese board and it doesn't get eaten. And, you know, although cheese is my weakness, I can't just sit there and eat several blocks of cheese. So I'll tend to chop each one up into four or something and then freeze it. And then you can take a little bit of each and make yourself a little mini cheese board whenever you want it in the months to come. So this time at the beginning of this whole diet thing, I took um, a really nice semicircle of uh, reblochon and chopped it into eight pieces, worked out the calories per piece, which is about 86, uh, wrapped them individually and stuck them in the freezer. I've only actually used one of them. But at least I know I've got these lovely little wedges of tasty cheese if ever I want to have one, you know, over lunch. Um, so that's, you know, one good way of a using your freezer um, and portionizing in a way that will help you with calorie counting. So so my first question is that first piece that you've used, did you take it out of the freezer? Yes. Right. Was it was it, did it once it defrosted, was it exactly the same as it went in? Yeah, I mean, this is, is a so slightly softer cheese and it was just the same. Uh, you find when you freeze some things, so like, for example, if you freeze a cheddar, it tends to come out, it's just ever so slightly crumblier than it was before. Oh, right, okay. Um, they do sometimes slightly change the consistency of the cheese, um, but, you know, the taste and everything else about it is exactly the same. Right, okay, yeah, that's good. Um, uh, Mr. Kerr's like there Don't confirmed his uncle... No. You Oh, sorry, sorry, Ray. Don't try and defrost it in the microwave, though. You've got to let it defrost naturally. Like, take it out the day before right. and leave it in the fridge. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, else you'll have a blob of cheese. <laughs> oh, <we're dressing laughs> right. um, yeah, Mr. Kerslake confirmed that his uncle um, used to buy uh, blocks of cheddar and catering size, yeah. one kilogram yeah. blocks, and freeze yeah. them. And they said it was just as good. Yeah, especially say, if you can the crumbliness doesn't matter <laughs> yeah uh, and, uh, and i never thought about freezing milk to be honest i, I never thought of doing that but can no. be done our mum's never... always ahead of the time though to be honest yeah some people have big chest freezers i've only got like a little freezer so i can't fit milk in <laughs> yes uh shall i move on to the number two can't find number two. Oh, they're just in numerical order, whatever the next one is, probably three. three. I called some. So this is actually a preserving example rather than um, sort of, you know, portionizing. Um, but, you know, these raw vegetables, this is mainly sort of carrots, uh, cabbages, onions, things like that. Um, and, you know, you get a little bit of um, vinegar and, and sugar and, and you can actually preserve a lot of different things. Um, which is quite useful, especially if you've got like a cabbage you don't know what to do with. You can just do this with it and then you can use it, you know, on sort of summer slaws um, for m months later. So it's just mm. um, it's just an idea, really, um, more than anything. Yep, no, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Um, Andy Andy Kerslake pointed out that um, freeze, freezing milk's a good thing to take camping. Oh, yeah. Because by the time you uh, yeah. get camped and set up and that, you know, it'll start to defrost and uh, it'll last longer. So that's that's a good tip uh, for you campers. Yeah. It'll keep your uh, bags cold as well. Okay. And next. Oh, why is that? 
photo. Why are you not opening? Oh, there you go. So this one and the next one as well, if you want to sort of flick onto the next one, it's just really uh, sort of prepping and, and freezing vegetable portions. So that was one from um, my last grocery shop. So sometimes it will be a case of I've got some veggies left over or I've had a load of stuff from Riverford and I'm not going to use it in time. But I actually was purposeful in that I bought two broccolis and I bought 10 carrots. So I specifically had it in mind that I was going to do this. Um, because I wanted to make sure I find like the first week after my shopping comes, I have more vegetables available. And then in the second week, it ta tapers off a little bit. So I'm just trying to make sure that I up front get a load of veggies just sort of blanched and frozen so that I can make sure I've still got a really good stockpile of them in week two. And you're not anal at all. That's what that shows. <laughs> ah, Look at it. Just little bags. Just little bags. <laughs> I am just not that organized. Right, and... Uh, it's a Sunday. My shopping comes on a Sunday, which makes it really useful for prepping those sorts of things. So I kind of got two things to say about this. So this is actually things that I've prepared as recipes. And in terms of how I do that with um, calorie counting, there are two main ways that I do it. So on the right-hand side there, I'm not exactly sure what it is. It might have been a curry or something like that. Um, there's seven portions so what i'll do and this is where my fitness pal comes in is i'll create a recipe it'll be you know say bolognese or something i'll put in all the things that i use in the bolognese and then it has portion number and you put in seven so it'll automatically calculate for you how many calories is in one of those seven portions right. so it divides it for you um and it doesn't really matter what size that portion is as long as you try and keep them quite even um, so that's one way that I, I do the calorie counting with portions and, and batch cooking. The other one on the left there, there is um, something called a tabule. So sometimes I'll cook something like that in a batch. And what I actually do is I weigh the total weight of it. So say that was 1.4 kilos. What I'll do is I'll put it in my fitness pal as a recipe and call it tabule 100 grams. And if it's 1,400 grams, I'll put it in as 14 portions. Right. So it will automatically calculate for me how many calories are in 100 grams. And then as I use it, so that's not one that I would freeze. As I use it, I just weigh out how much I've used. And I can use 100 grams, 200 grams, 300 grams, and just plug that in. And it automatically calculates how many calories is in it. So, so, so one is portion based and is a fixed portion. The other one is done by weight and you can be more flexible about how much you use. Cool. I'm guessing both it, use my that's the, what do you call, <laughs> what did you call that? That's the tab, tabule? Tabule on the left, yeah. That thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's, um, it's a kind of like a, um, a Lebanese style dish, uh, normally with something like bulgur or couscous i think it's normally bulgur um, and lots of fresh herbs like um coriander and mint it's delicious um and this is kind of a bit of the same um those were ones i did a couple of weeks ago the baba ganoush on the right which we mentioned and those are three little tubs of um celeriac mash that i can get out whenever i have um like a low fat sausage or a or a, a steak cool I think your talk of cheese has uh, inspired Space King to write another song. Uh, feel the fruit and the cheese instead of feel the breeze. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and this one was, um, I, I think I mentioned this at one point, but um, we had a barbecue uh, ah. a few weeks ago for a friend and I did foist most of the leftovers onto people because I didn't want it hanging around the house. But um, mm. there was quite a lot leftover so that night it was really late at night but i made sure i stripped all of the meat off the chicken with no you know no fat no skin just the meat put it into little tubs like that they're 100 grams each and um, and then i popped them in the freezer and worked out how many calories are in each pot so i can just take one out and have that on a chicken salad anytime and it's actually got that really nice barbecuey flavor as well which is a bit of a treat but this is a, another good food you know trying to avoid food wastage whilst you know calorie counting and using the freezer all in one go yeah le leftover barbecue never makes it that far in my house uh. 
Yeah, unfortunately, with calorie counting, I can't just sit there next day and eat loads of no. nice sausages. Yes. <laughs> So this is kind of strays a little bit away from um, batch cooking. This is uh, prepping. I don't know if anybody's tried prepping before, but um, I had a little bash with this last year and it just looks glorious, doesn't it? So, so what the idea is with prepping is that you prep all of your food for several days in advance. Um, and then it sort of stops you from snacking. You've, you've got it all set out as to what you're gonna have. Um, you know, you, I've got like the fruit for breakfast, got some crudités, um, there's like little tubs of, of hummus and um, uh, balsamic reduction, a little, um, I think that's um, a pearl barley uh, thing for lunch. And then for dinner, there's chicken and vegetables and, and squash and all sorts. Um, so it's, it's a really good way of being structured about what you eat. Uh, it's good for getting healthy and, and stopping you from, from straying. But was it a complete pain in the ass to do? It's quite fun to do because unlike a meal where everything has to come together at once, you can do it in bits and pieces. Right. So, you know, I'll be sort of like boiling off some veg. Once that's done, I'll put that in each of the four slots. I'll be cooking off some, you know, so you can just sort of build it up item by item. But then yeah. when you're eating it, shove the whole um, dinner tray in, in the microwave. It's like it's like a microwave, yeah, what, what do they call them? TV dinners, they used to call them. It's like TV dinners, but it's one that you've made yourself, which is full of super healthy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So Space King says it just isn't any prepping. This is McBob prepping. <laughs> yeah, <I have> to, <laughs> it's for, for Marks and Spencer's. Another yeah. picture. Go on to this picture. This but is just another one of You're not things. selling us on the you're not <laughs> anal uh, <laughs> um, uh, Even to try and get up high enough to take a really good aerial picture took me quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> And the last one is just the same sort of thing. And the top section there is the breakfast. So that's two boiled eggs and bacon. Um, and then the middle section is the lunch and the bottom section is dinner. Know, it's just, yeah. you know, some thoughtful people. This sort of thing might suit some people. Um, I certainly enjoyed it for the for the weeks when I was doing it, but I can only I could only really do that on weeks when I was at home. And obviously I travel a lot of the time, which made it impractical to keep up with. Mm. Oh, that's curry verse on the bottom there. Brat verse with right. um, tomato sauce and curry powder. So yummy. <laughs> it looks yummy. I can't do this kind of prepping at the moment because this sort of sized meals would be way over my calorie limits. Um, but, you know, they're so pretty. And I thought while we're talking about batch cooking, prepping might also be of interest. But for but for Smiler D and myself, this would be perfect for having sort of meals on wheels. If we just all give you a few quid each week and you could just deliver these packages to us. And they're, they're even nice little sealable boxes. It's, yeah, it's, right, it's looking yeah. like a perfect idea to me. Yeah, um, I've got a stack of them here that I haven't used for a few months now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dee, Smiler, let me know in chat if you think that's a good idea. Uh, we can Smiler strong, Brain strong armor perfect. into it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks like a really delicious set of meals though uh yeah all very pretty and colorful it is sort of rainbow fade on the crudities crudities there <laughs> artistic license <laughs> yeah lovely oh yeah dion's up for that she says that works for her <laughs> yeah so so of all these uh things that you've tried the prepping the batch cooking um is there anything that works particularly well for you that you think yeah that's like the best thing and anything that you you tried that you thought actually no that's just too much hassle i'm never going to do that again um i mean i think the the, the, the prepping one there it does take uh, quite a lot of organization to do um and i think you know it's, it's it, for me it's sustainable in smaller bursts i don't think i could do that forever mm. um but, I mean, I've been pre-preparing batches of food and 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 putting them in the freezer for years and years and years. I don't just do that for dieting purposes. I do it because I only like cooking when I've got time to cook. I don't want to cook every night, but I don't like having pre-processed, pre-packaged food. So the only way I can make sure I'm eating something that I freshly cooked every night is to cook in batches, and then I've got it all available. Plus, I found when um, Ludacris moved in with me, if he didn't have my cooking on hand, just put in the microwave, he would end up having beans on toast every night. So um, it's also helps with his general survival and nutrition. Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, anything that you really didn't like? I I don't think so, no. no I mean, I, I used to find things out a bit of a pain, but I've kind of gotten a lot more used to it in the last year or so. Yeah. And as long as you've got a little set of scales that just sit on the side, it, it takes seconds. Um, so, yeah, that's not a problem anymore either. I think if you've got like this, the, the scales the know-how to put these things together, the things like the packaging and all that sort of thing. If you have those things all lined up, then it's not as bad as like trying to do it all ad hocly, I suppose. Yeah. And it all depends on you know, different things for different people. You know, mm. horses for courses and all that. It depends on what you're trying to achieve and what yeah. your weaknesses are. You know, I've never been particularly that much of a snacker, but I know that that is a problem for some people. And that's where prepping might be a good option for some people yeah. because like having a lunchbox, you've got what you've got and you know, you don't, you don't put other stuff in between it. You already know exactly what you're going to have for that entire day. Cool. Well, thank you for taking us through that. Is, have you got anything else? Is that, is that it? No, are we done for that? This week. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, so now we've got our sort of, uh, um, our tech sorted out of what tech we're using on this journey um, with our fitness watches and our apps. We've got some ideas of the recipes and things we should be cooking and consuming and some great advice from Mazat McBob on that. Next week, we've got Ludacris from KD Fitness coming to talk to us about um, keeping fit, fitness regimes. Um, yeah, we're hoping to broadcast live on location from holiday in Nuki. Yes. Um, <laughs> You know, if we have problems with the hotel Wi-Fi or anything, we'll run it off our phones. Um, but, you know, just warning you, we might run into some kind of technical issues, but we hope to be broadcasting, yeah, from, from a different location. Yeah. We're going to give it a go. We'll we'll bring you as, as best a show as we can. And we've yeah. got somebody's birthday meal out on Friday this week. So yes. um, it'll be interesting to see what I can try and manage to eat and stay within my calorie limit. We'll see how that goes. It's my birthday. I'm going crazy. I don't care. It's... That, that's absolutely fine. And yes. so you should. If it was my birthday, I would not be dieting that day either. No. Um, yes. However, my, I will my birthday on Friday. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thank you very much, Mazin with Bob, um, for another great show. Uh, thank you, everyone in chat, for um, all your contributions. And uh, congratulations to... All of you on losing weight this week, D, Smiler, Maz, um, well, well done to you all, and uh, yeah, and uh, we'll we'll see you again same time next week. Okay, remember yes, to like indeed. and subscribe if you haven't already done so. <laughs>